My time. Your time. <laughs> yeah, man, so greetings to all viewers and listeners, all youth promotion, sugar mine at fans and air condition. <laughs> so, so, for a man like me now, he's a countryman who actually heard about youth promotion and took it upon myself to come to Kingston one night when when they had a show or a dance. It was a clash, I think, on, on um, halfway through the road. But before that, Major Stichu was the selector. He used to select a sound that I used to be on in the country. And then Colorman, which was one of the main DJ, was from Youth Promotion. And the sound that myself and Garnet Bimbo at the time was on, we clashed with Youth Promotion already down in Manchester and all of that stuff. So they always encouraged me to come forward. So this time I come forward. And when I came to Kingston that evening, <laughs> the, actually the, 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 the sound clash was, was off. And so I, I saw some people who told me that one of the main person for the sound died. His name was Nabi. I, I never see that regiment. Yeah, yeah. And so they were keeping they were keeping something for him over Portmore. And so a virgin named Goody and some other virgin bring him over there and yeah. A wonderful vibes took place. Some other sound was playing down the road and them lock up. And I remember the very thing I wanted to tell a man like Sugar Mine as he told me, like he said, Yeah, you know, you love your sound or you come upon the sound, of which that was the objective. So being around Sugar Mine at Sound, every Thursday night we played at um, Robert Crescent. So for me, you no know, Robert Crescent was like the one, the epicenter of 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 musical development for you. It was like a musical video <laughs> scene, like a like what you'd call a head a man because when you go there, you see. Every artist that you have heard of, um, you get a chance to rub shoulder with some of the greats like the Tenor Stars and the Tristan Palm and Michael Palm and the Great Sugar Miners and the Nitty Gritty, you name them. Every Thursday night it was a guarantee to, to, to see all of these people. And Round the Sound was just clustered with artists trying to get a break or to talk on the sound. So, Talking about like um the 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 Edna Manley achievement at the time in terms of learning stuff, you have to know how to navigate your way <laughs> in order to get a, a a a talk on the mic because everybody rushed the tough rhythm there. Yeah? Yeah. So you have to make sure that you can write some rhythm when you know the the round the sound kinda gets scanty. And those rhythms were rhythms with bridges and all of that stuff. So in order for you to get a highlight, and you, well, for me, that was some of my strategy. Learning how to go on those rhythms and make sure say, I put some powerful lyrics on it. And once you start, get some genuine forward from the people that is here, they want it to continue. Such was the vibe at Youth Promotion every Thursday night. And then, you know, during Friday and Saturday and sometimes Sunday, you go all over the place. And you, and you play, I can remember four song clash with, with Blackstar and Jack Scorpio and King Jamis. Um, I don't know if it's stadium or it's cinema too, one of those places. And yeah, tennis are just seriously, you know, kill everything. Yeah, with the help of, 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 of everybody else still, but I remember he was the highlight. Yeah, man, so your promotion to me is, is one of those. Fundamental organization that helped to develop reggae and dance or Jamaican music, as 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 far as I'm concerned, it helps to develop that into what it is now. And just like how you have people like people like Prince Hall out of out of Barbados and John Ross Worm from Jamaica who went to America into the Black Liberation studies from in the 17th century, and people don't hear of them mostly. 
what they hear of Marcus Garvey, but these people were predecessors. Sugar Minot is one of those persons who is really one of the foundation and the, and, 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 and the peer setter, and you think about it too. Or oh, the early peer setter, you know, <laughs> and all that stuff. He was one of those persons where caused music to be where it is at now in terms of development. When you talk about dance, all people talking about clashes and all them things, yeah, we go through some of the most serious clashes in the 80s with, with, with um, Ken Dan Sound, with, with Black Scarpia, with Black Star, you name them, and Sound Youth Promotion, always come out victorious. He's the man who first put, the, I think, the word dance all in song. When he said, redeem, 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 mm -hmm. and then you tune to the dance all kick. He's the man who first I heard did that. So if you, if you listen to even Sugar song, you see that it was there. It, it was the end product of how this virgin thinks. You know what I mean? Because he, he, he actually define what was dance all in that time and even though we accept what is dance all now because we understand the evolution if you listen to those songs then you can know how how that dance hall thing started from the space instead of just a genre you know what i mean yeah man you would like i and i salute sugar violet because i learned a lot during my youth promotion days with daddy freddy and color man and black cat yes daddy and everyone yeah and, and the chief himself who actually, you know, created that space for people who 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 wanted to learn, come forward and, and let me tell you something. Even though you never have a person who was a tutor teaching you, you have to learn because you're going to look and see what every other artist do, and then you're going to, to take snippets from all of these artists to put in your own thing. Make it your own and develop yourself. So, we say salute <laughs> to Sugar is one of those stalwarts in the industry where, yeah, his 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 story should be told, and 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 and, and, and it, it should it should reach to the public, uh, um, in an undiluted way because most people just hear the song, but yeah, the man the man intention was about development and broaden the music span more than what it was at the time and even though he's not around we can see that is happening now. Well yeah. his, his teacher was um his mentor was Clement Dodd and he's he's known as the son of Studio One. Uh, I mean he gives himself that title. So he was definitely inspired and did um, Mr. Dodd always even saluted him and said, the only thing that you didn't do right, Sugar, you should have signed the artist. <laughs> yes. yes that's, uh, that's true. Hmm? That is true because when you look at all of those who I saw around Sugar Minot, if, if he signed everybody to, to, to where they all reach, yeah, he would not have to sing again. He just needed to get <laughs> <laughs> and he would be fine. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. I, th I think also too that um, from my observation that that he 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 was he he knew that he was great, but he never flaunted. No, no. And I, I I I got that even though it was very uh, irritating yeah. mentally and logically. Um, how he did what he did because he he literally sacrificed his career True. to um, to push the, this greater idea, yeah. you know, because his career was the what do you call it the investment to make the greater idea. It wasn't for him to be a star, even though he would mind if that happened, but right. it was to push this new promotion label, you know. Yeah, man. Um, it's, I I, I saw that too because he, he's somebody who had a tremendous talent, but he actually had the sound system and had that space thrown at Robert Crescent where people could go as a sound theory to learn and to, you know, have camaraderie and all of those kind of vibes, which, you know, you don't find that all the time. You know what I mean? I, I just hope, I, I, in, in retrospect, if 
if if if just like what Cox, um said that said sign the artist if he had struck well the structure was there but if it was tightly controlled yeah it would be a serious powerhouse in the world it's like a motor because all of the talents came there and the whole of town come down there every Thursday night. You know? I tell you, the road full from down there, the street of the RGR and all of that stuff. I used to look forward to go to Robert Christian every Thursday night, just like home, and I look forward to go to any big show because, you know, that was the place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the rest in power, Chief. <laughs> well, that set the play- pace for um, his legacy. Because, you know, I, I've been focused on how to structure your promotion now um, because of the goodwill that the artists have for him and for what they experienced and to find a model of how that work can be preserved because if it's not structured, then it's it's almost like public domain for anybody to do what they, you know? want to do about it. I so agree. I have something in mind, you know, to yes. present um, to the U Promotion crew, including the sound system, which is, you know, also a business like the artists and that these brethren um, that have held the, the platform over the weekend for the marathon, you know, they have the U Promotion that's being played now out of London and there's a crew in um, Georgia. And there's another um, crew in uh, Japan, as well as those who in the fourth year in Jamaica. And just by the weekend, I really realized that, wow, you know, Max, you can structure this. Um, and it would be unique, you know, like how, you know, and become a platform for his legacy and other people and other things and other projects, you know. Well, one other thing I know is that if those dub plays that I know of that used to play when Major Stitch used to play that sound, if those dub plays can come to the fore right now, there is no sound in the world that could play those kind of dubs. So it, that alone would make it be so unique. Unique, because, yes. Yeah, because the, everyone who I know who was of anyone at that time, from the tennis to the Johnny Asbury and all of them, when the nitty gritty, when those dubs, play at youth promotion it, it was always something to experience so if those dubs are around them need to do so them dub them stuff I used to hear them myself and it's a good vibe man because you know the sound system especially because that was where I get most of my experience in town from to perform to people uh, yeah my hope is that yeah it can preserve and preserve in a way that the, the, the next generation and the next next generation will understand what happened there. And, and right, and, and that's how I, I actually am approaching his legacy is to actually set up a, a dance hall museum yeah. that through him as the main actor, because he did everything, you know, you have like a main actor that can show all of the other actions. Yes. And, and and where his studio is also located is um, a central location because a lot of other the studios like um, Jammies and so forth is inaccessible or in spaces that you couldn't actually, you know, build out from. So I'm hoping in my vision, that's what I, I, I think would be um, appropriate, is that a dance or mus- a museum that um articulated the role of the sound system because it's still happening it's it's the, the sound system is so huge internationally in terms of um the thousands and thousands of them that turned around to feed the artists here because everybody could do a dub plate you know mm-hmm. sometimes you can do a hundred dub plates for the week to service just a little bit of the sound them you know right. that's in the world but the narrative, the narrative that is out there about sound systems, some people just know say key dance clash. But the, the origination of these things, they don't really have, they don't have, they don't have that perspective, and that needs to to be touched. So yeah, exactly. Even the fact that a lot of the sound companies, because when I was doing the research for the museum, I realized that 
we we innovated like now they're saying innovation is the key you know to an economy the new economy but when i realized that the innovation of the amplification of sound that becomes you know audio systems was done here in jamaica right wow. and but we proliferated it into sound systems and internationally they learned from us and pro proliferated it into sound companies companies that made you know the speakers and so we built the speakers out of x but we never had a, a a company now that would build them now to send them globally in the consumer market and um yes yeah, so you know in my mind i just wanted to make that they make it like we're fertilized literally you know because there's a big one of the biggest sounds uh companies I think they said they started their company in the 60s yes. and out of England. And I know that, you know, we started here in the 50s. And I know that they must have gotten that information out of what we did. And when, you know, the Windrush people went over and, you know, yes. all of that. And I said, if we, to them, other people may know who Bill Box, Putin, Twitter, you know. <laughs> Exactly, you know. And but we didn't have the vision governmentally and industrially to to know that, you know, we could own those uh, mechanisms and be, you know. So we're really looking even for those companies okay. to actually pay homage to Jamaica. Because if they have the communication and, you know? They should. They should, but we have to communicate who we are, you know? Like put our hand up in the air and say, you know, we did that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that is the problem, you know, is that we, we, we must not allow people to write our own story. Exactly. Because that is his story, but that is why I, I, I things like these are very important to those who are watching and listening that you know when you hear when them talk about you hear from the horse's mouth that kind of stuff there because the people who who are a part of a lot of things that happen in jamaica they are still alive it's not like yeah. you have to get and spell and so we, we, we need to have that that archive that yeah. is, that's written or or spoken of by us who have seen it yeah you know i mean and if, if people want to to interpret it or augment it in their way verbally that they can, but people at least must know, you know, say, yeah, a man like Sugar Man that never only sing some wonderful songs and have so many albums, but his intention was about development and developing other artists. That, that to me, that was one of his main things where he wanted to bring a community with him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think a lot of politicians even do that. They just look at the book. <laughs> <laughs> it was there like every day, you know what I mean, with everybody, sometimes everybody and you don't know that, yeah, that is sugar man that you don't know because you just sit here with everybody talking, smoking and do, and you know what I mean, simple and that, that is admirable and in, in retrospect that was, is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. And for you being a student, I'm also acknowledging that we're looking at your graduation into the industry. <laughs> <laughs> we're also inspired by what you have done and what you have accomplished and um, in developing yourself and developing your brand and, and a huge festival that is now a leader, you know, in the space. So we're looking to come behind yeah. you and have you as an investor in our festival that we're going to build on <laughs> sugar. Yeah, well, 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 you never know. You never know. You never <laughs> know. Let's talk. The future. Yes, of the you, you have the template of making it happen. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, you have the template. I, 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 and the truth is, though, I've watched a lot and, and learned from a lot and then create our own thing. And yeah, man, it's for us to share. We have no yeah, problem yeah. with that. I, I want to tell you, Tina, what, when I started Flames Production, you know, it was, it was the idea, just like how I see Sugar try to help other artists. That was what I actually tried to. But I kind of, 
had uh, had to you know say divert a little <laughs> because of because of how I see the the, the terrain is. You yes. know what I mean? Uh, but but the whole idea of me having all these artists that came out of planes like the Rush Child or the Everton Blender, the Garden Slave, everybody, that was the same idea I was yes. trying to push forward. But it's the same concept of helping, but I have to, you know, I divert it a little in a, in a, in, in, a, a, in, a, in a platform. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have to, I have to, I have yes. to. Yeah, man. Why am I? It's a good vibe, man. I want to hear what Sly have to say because. <laughs> <laughs> Sly, up, man. Nice. That'll be like a history. <laughs> it's a book. Come on. All right. Give him a, give him a blessing. Will do. I, 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 when you go on, sometimes when I go on the internet, I'm finding some youth promotion things. You know, it's like they have to show me youth, them and say, you see that? I was hungry. I needed it. <laughs> because the fire that was passing through, like you say, you know what I mean? Yeah, there goes somebody who who, who wanted to, to, to go somewhere. And I just saw some things too, when myself and Sly was doing something for, for my first album for for Columbia. I just found that because it's like um, the Virgin who used to do the management for me, Dennis Stone, looked like mm-hmm. he in 1992, I think, and so I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's just a great vibe to see how, how you know, things started from like nothing to talk, two strings play, and then the, the end result is a, a wonderful song in with a, in the compilation of an album. Those things are, are great to see. And just, and just as you bring up that memory, and you're closing out, we must acknowledge. Um, Bobby Digital, yeah. um, who you know just passes Friday or so, and yeah, you know a key, key, key person in the whole space. In the space, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but you know, because you you were the the A and R at Columbia who signed me there, and I I have a gold record in my office, and the gold record is. Is Sweet Jamaica that was on the album Stirred Up. Yes. And it, I think it's it, 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 it also nominated for Grammy. And, and Grammy, Bobby, yeah, yeah. Bobby Digital was the one who produced Sweet Jamaica for me and, and be careful what you teach like the children and, and others. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Enough respect about it, man. Sure. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. We have to keep those memories go on and, and, and the next generation that is coming must know, must take note of some of the things that these and what it did. You know what I mean? You don't have to follow them script by script, but there are certain elements within what they did which is very important and, and need to, to, to preserve and continue so that the, the next, next, next generation will see that. Well, thank you very much, um, t- Tony, for you know supporting this effort. And this is one of the opportunities that we have gotten out of COVID. I don't have to book you, you know. And and we we have, we have recorded this for posterity so it will be up on the page. So outside of the audience that is here now and viewing, you know, it will be there to inform um a lot of ones about our collective, you know. Where, where, where we have come from and in our success, where we need to network, you know, to build ourselves and our legacy. Yeah, man, I agree. I give thanks. Sometimes it comes like legacy, Bill already, I just, we feel well on it. Oh, wait, right. Well, yes. Bill a basket for it. <laughs> yeah, man. Respect, Maxine. Yeah, respect as well. I get up sly when I'm forward. Yes, yes. Yeah, man. Okay, so I'm going to look for Mr. Slide on by now. <laughs> All right.